Good afternoon, I'm Mark from BoatsAndBikes.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the P&H Bahia. This one is a 2004 all glass boat. Now I don't work for P&H, I don't sell their boats, so everything you're going to be getting today is nothing but my own twisted and uh, biased opinions. Um, don't know if the weather's going to hold today, we're dealing with the aftermath of some of the hurricane that came up from the, uh, from the south, so it's been kind of sunny and rainy all day but we're going to try to get this boat in the water for you uh, we'll tell you a little bit about the characteristics take a little closer look at it and you can decide if this might be a boat for you all right so let's get a look at this boat a little bit closer up um, first in general right PNH typical of a British built boat um, very, very good build quality, extremely well built, lots of fiberglass in this one. Um, so it makes the boats a little bit heavy. However, uh, they are absolutely bomb proof, very durable. Um, and with the uh, rather thick gel coat, you can even scratch them up a bit before you get down to the, uh, to the actual glass. Just really, really nicely built boats. And if you are thinking about buying something on the used market like this, you know, buying something like a Valley or a PH that's a little overbuilt uh, will guarantee that, or will help to guarantee that you end up with a boat that's gonna hold up and has held up well. Um, you know, the downside is a little bit heavier, so when you deadlift this thing onto your car, you've got your work cut out for you. But if you can get past that part of it, uh, you know, the couple extra eight, 10, 12 pounds, um, very, very durable boats. It's nice too if you're going out touring to have a boat that's um, extremely well built and durable. You just don't have to worry about, uh, you know, cracking, leaking, what have you. Um, so, PH, fantastic build quality. Now, this particular boat, it is from their uh, traditional grouping, um, and it is very much a traditional Greenland boat. You can see the swept up bow, uh, the sharp point to the front, that um, hatchet entryway, or that hatchet you know, water entry, um, makes it a fairly good rough water boat, actually. Um, it is a hard chine boat. Uh, in true traditional fashion, and like most Greenland boats, let's get a side shot of this thing. Like most Greenland boats, um, tipped up in the in the bow, tipped up in the stern, uh, fairly centered cockpit. Um, take a look at the uh, the top side of this thing. Now this one is a relatively small hatch to the bow, standard keyhole cockpit. This boat is a sliding skeg model. I like their sliding skegs, um, actually. As long as you keep the, uh, as long as you keep the cables straight, you don't pull those cables. They work really well. Um, has a little day hatch that is sealed or, or bulkheaded on both sides, and then a fairly large stern hatch. Now, um, while we're talking about hatches, the volume on this boat isn't huge. Um, the uh, the way the chines tip up in the stern and also in the bow, right at the point where you would load it down with gear if you were touring, um, makes it you know relatively small. There's just you know it's not a huge area to load on this boat. So if you're going away um, around the Cape of who knows where for you know two months, you might have to look elsewhere. Just just not that much storage space on the boat. But, you know, for weekends away or for smart packing, not a problem. And, you know, the, the trade-off is that it's going to be really fast. You know, this one at, at short of 18 and 21 and a half wide, um, all in those hard shines, it's a very, very quick boat. Um, it, it, it's not just a quick boat, though. It's a quick boat that handles well in rough conditions. Now, um, it's also a boat that requires a little bit of attention. And, and here's what I mean by that. It doesn't mean that you're, you know, at every minute, you're just feeling like you're going to tip over but if you are a new paddler um, or you're coming off of a, of a you know a wider more stable boat this thing's going to feel unstable initially you know with those hard shines i think you get used to it pretty quickly i found it fairly forgiving um, i've never really felt out of control in this boat or you know never really felt sweaty in this boat but um yeah if um if you aren't used to a narrow performance tour um, this will keep your attention now, let's take a quick look at the cockpit now um, fairly standard keyhole type cockpit. It's got the uh, got the knee braces right here, um, so you can uh, you know wedge in there. Very very nice. It's it's a nice snug fit. I like this boat. I like the cockpit. Um, so I, I do have a bias. I've really enjoyed paddling this, and I've paddled it quite a bit. Uh, molded fiberglass seat on the 2004 model. Has hip pads. Using the Explorer seat back again. Found it very very comfortable. Been in this boat all day. Never really had a challenge with it. Uh, 
inside. Um, a fair bit of room. I'm about 5'9", and uh, have about 10 and a half shoes. Um, I'm three quarters of the way or a little bit more on the sliders, and you know, I do like to be fairly snug. So, you know, you're probably good to about 6'2", maybe 6'3", on this boat, uh, and then you're going to max out. Also, if you have really big dogs, uh, you may have little trouble sneaking them in there. It's not huge. You know, same thing with the keyhole cockpit, not really huge. Um, I find as I get my butt in there, it's, it's a bit of a challenge to, to drop my feet in afterward. So, again, if you're a uh, real Sasquatch, um, yeah, it's not that this boat won't handle you, but, you know, it's... It's probably good to about 6162, and then you might find it getting a little snugly. Um, okay, good. Let's take another look at uh, the underside of this boat. A moment, we'll flip her over. Let's see if we can get a shot of these chines here. So, ugh, again, really sharp entry, very pronounced chine. Uh, long stern keel molded in, and there you can see the skeg, which I have not uh, have not deployed. Um, so what you get here is a boat that really, really likes to go straight, especially when you drop that skeg. I mean, this is a definitely a point and shoot boat. Here we are uh, out on the water, skigs up right now. Um, again, you know, I'm impressed with the speed of the boat. She just gets up and goes. Um, there are faster boats out there, but I don't think there's many that are this quick and still handle rough water as well. You know, she has a fair bit of rock here. Um, does fine in rough water. She'd be a great touring boat, but still has some speed. <laughs> there's our thunder. Looks like I'll have to call my paddle a little bit short today. Um, but yeah, you throw the skate down, and there's just absolutely no way she's coming off of center. Just points and goes. As far as stability goes, you know, um, you know really, you know, I've got it down to the combing right here. I get it down to the combing right here. I still feel fairly stable on her. Um, yeah, she's got a little, hey, you know, even off center. It just, it just feels really confident. Now, I've spent a fair bit of time in this boat, um, and I can see where if you have never, you know, paddled this type of boat or if you were brand new to, uh, to kayaking in general, um, this one might be a bit of a challenge, but really, I don't find it unstable at all. In fact, I just like the feel. I mean, she's just the right mix of, um, you know, go forward performance and, um, and stability. Now, I had mentioned this is a point and shoot boat that really likes going straight but um, we're coming up on the marker here uh, my usual turnaround so what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to use the natural hard chine we're going to use the hull design a little bit see if we can get some spin on her the skeg is up um, obviously I'm paddling into it a little bit but if I tip away from it you know the natural turn of the boat or the natural uh, shape of the hull tends to spin it around so it's not turning like a ruddered boat or, um, you know, something that uh, uh, is designed for play. It definitely turns like a touring boat, but with that hard chine design, there's a 180 degree turn right there. You know, with that hard chine design, you can, uh, you can use the shape of the hull to really help you bring her about. When we're talking about things like wind and we're talking about things like current, um, you know, with wind, it, it's not too bad, especially if you drop that skeg, and, and again, it just it just heads forward, but it does like to get pushed around a little bit, um, a little bit in the stern. It's, you know, it's fairly low volume uh, in the stern. It's a fairly low stern, a little bit higher bow. It does get pushed around a little bit from the stern, uh, a little bit of weather cocking. Yeah, p &H just got it right. Uh, they have the perfect mix of traditional design. They took the very best of traditional design, used modern materials and some uh, modern know-how. And really came up with a winner, the PNH Bahia. Flip and love this one. Mark from BoatsandBikes.com.